Hello and welcome to this tutorial in Vega. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the tournament software Vega to run uh, relatively simple tournaments. In this case I'll be showing a Swiss system tournament with teams which is a very typical uh, tournament format for scholastic tournaments in the United States. I'll be focusing particularly on um, on USCF tournaments, although Vega supports many, many different federations. And of course, if you're not worried about submitting your results to a federation and the regulations of the specific federation, any tournament pairing software such as Vega will be fine for your tournament. So, Vega is a free software on Linux, it's free on Windows for up to 30 players, and it's very affordable at around $50 for more than 30 players on Windows much cheaper than uh, SwissSys or WinTD. It does have somewhat fewer features, but for most of what a typical club director or someone who runs a school club uh, would need, Vega is going to be quite ideal and a lot more affordable for you. I really think a lot more people in the United States should be using Vega for casual and small rated tournaments. I would also say that I find Vega to be more user friendly than SwissSys or WinTD where the wealth of features can make it kind of difficult to find uh, the specific functions that you need. So let's get started. We're going to be doing a few things today. Uh, first we'll be creating a tournament, then we'll be loading a database into Vega. We'll be adding a players to our tournaments. We'll talk a little bit about Scholastic Team Tournaments and some of the settings that you need in Vega for that. We'll be pairing around. We'll be generating some reports such as cross tables and standings, team standings, things like that. And finally, we'll submit to the USCF. So let's go and create a new tournament. File new tournament. Let's say that the tournament name is Game 30 Action. I'm just going to make it one word for a simple uh, field. I'm going to set it in my current town and I'm going to play in the USA. Oops. Okay, so that's my federation. Not adjusting the beginning and ending dates. I do want a Swiss USCF tournament. If you wanted a round robin or you wanted to use FIDE systems or something like that, you could select those options. Score game is an interesting option. I'm not going to adjust it here, but if you wanted to disincentivize draws with soccer scoring or some other scoring system, then you could change that option in here. Everything else except the arbiter, I'm going to leave as is, but you could certainly adjust the tie breaks here. And I'm just going to be saving to my desktop since this is just a demonstration tournament. Let's click Done. Now we're in the Players Archive here, and naturally at this point we need to add players to the tournament. So. The easiest way to add players is just to click the Add Player button. Let's say I add myself to the tournament, and I'm actually going to use a capitalized format because I know that I'm going to be pulling in from a capitalized format in a moment. Okay, My federation, I'm not going to worry about my birthday, my gender, title, any of this stuff. You can get rid of that if you want. All I'm going to worry about is my ID, my current USCF rating, and then I will worry about this origin field. The origin field is going to be the team. I don't know if this is the best named field, but so be it. And let's say that this team name is going to be um, Pinewood Principal Academy. So I'm at Pinewood Principal Academy. And I hit enter, and now I'm in the tournament system. Now I can proceed to enter the rest of the players this way, it's very easy to do, but if I'm doing a USCF rated tournament and I know that my players are USCF members, I can go down into the database section here in database 1, and I can set the DB, the database, and load up the ratings file, this text file here, which I've downloaded from the US Chess website. I'll include in the links on the YouTube video some description of how to get this file, but you simply download it from the Tournament Directors section on the USCF website, and you can select it here. Once you've selected it, you can go over into this text box here, highlighted in yellow, 
and search players. Let's search for some of the famous US Chess Federation players and add them to the tournament. I just double click and I've added Alexander Stropinski here. Could also add Sam Shankland, Gata Komsky, uh, the Fine Golds. There's Grandmaster Benjamin and his son Spencer. Uh, famous female player, uh, Camilla Baginskaite. Whoops, spelled that wrong. There she is. It does take a moment to search through, so if you're not getting a result right away, do be patient because it is a large file to sort. Okay, uh, That's seven players. Let's add one more. Let's add Alexander Linderman. All right, that's eight players. That's enough for our tournament. Let's go in and we won't worry about the rest of these fields, um, except the gender. As long as it's showing, let's make sure that Camilla is properly entered here as the only female player. All right, let's set the teams. Okay, I've got two other players from Pinewood. Um, let's say that we also have players from Sequoia uh, National Institute. I'm going with a tree name here, format, Sequoia National Institute, and uh, let's say Oakwood Preparatory uh, School. Oakwood Preparatory School for the last two players. Three players for PPA, three players for SNI, and two players for OPS. Once I've entered all the players, I can start my tournament. One thing that I might like to do before I do that is enter some buys. Let's say that both of the players from OPS are arriving late and won't be able to play in the first round. So we can go in and we can right click on those players and set player status and we can give them a half point buy for the first round or for any other rounds if we wanted to. This would also be where I could withdraw players if I wanted to. Set player status for Alexander Linderman as well and both of the OPS players Camilla Baginskaite and Alexander Linderman are credited with a first round buy. Now I also I need to close registration at this point. I may also want to print a players list and post that before the first round. But let's say at this point that I close registration. I do want to close registration. And I'm automatically taken to the round manager and asked if I want to generate pairings for round one. I do and to do that, I only need to click this automatic button, and I'll generate USCF pairings. Now, since I'm running a Scholastic team tournament, one thing that I don't want is for players to place their team members. I can go in and I can click Avoid Pairs, and this is going to apply to that origin field as well here. And so I can click Done, and now team members should not be paired against each other. Let's click automatic. We'll assign a random color to board one, to player one. And I've got three games generated because two of my players had a buy. Okay. After the round is done, I'm ready to enter my results. And I can do that just by selecting the game and then clicking the player's result here. So let's say a white win, a black win, and then a white win. All my results have been entered, and I'm ready to move on to round two. Okay, Let's go straight into round two at this point, and we'll look at some other things later. To start round two, all I need to do at this point is click Automatic again. Now I have all my players since the OPS players arrived, and we'll be playing in round two. Notice that they're credited with that half point for the first round. Let's say round two is an excellent round in which you would like to be white. White wins all the games in round two here. Okay, and let's do a third round. Round three is a good day to be black. All black wins. And let's pair the fourth round and stagger the results. Okay, now I probably should have been generating some reports as the tournament was going on, but let's say that I didn't do that yet but I do want to show the standings 
before the final round so players know where their teams and where they themselves are in the standings. So I would go to this output here. Pretty much everything that I want to print, I can print from this output section. I could get a standard cross table here or a ranked cross table. That sounds more like what I want. It's easy to figure out what things are because as you hover over them, they will show you uh, a brief description of the buttons. I generate a rank cross table, I see that Alexander Linderman, after four rounds, is in clear first with three and a half, but he is catchable by Sam Shankland, who's half a point back, and by Camilla Baganskaite, who has two and a half out of four. It's not been a good day for Benjamin Feingold. The random button clicking has not been favorable to him, and he's lost all four games at this point in the tournament. Okay. I could also generate the team standings here, so I can go to standing and rank teams. Let's say that the top two players count as the team score, and we see OPS has six points and is in first place in the team standings. Notice that I'm only counting the top two scores, so PPA and SNI only get credit for the scores of their top two players, five points and three points. Okay, And this also appears in the output section here. These three tabs, the players, the games, and the outputs, are really all you have in Vega and all you really need. From the output, if I want to print anything, I can print it from here. And if I wanted to, I could modify it slightly before I printed it. I can also generate PDFs as well, which is very handy for easy distribution after the tournament. Okay. So now that we've uh, generated those standings for the teams and the individuals, let's go in and pair that fifth uh, and final round. Let's generate results. The tournament is concluded, and in the end, back here if we generate that ranked cross table and output again, we see that there was a large well, a two-way tie between Alexander Linderman, who lost in the last round, and Camilla Baginskaiti, who had a very good result. And they were both favored. They're from the same team, and they both got that half point by. Had a very, very fine result. Okay. Now, the tournament's concluded. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to submit this tournament to the USCF. You don't need to worry about this step at all. If your tournament is an unrated club tournament or something like that, this is all you need to do. The tournament is over and, uh, and you're done with the software. You can pack up and go home, uh, save your tournament for uh, retrospective purposes, but you're good. If you are running a rated tournament, you do want to submit the tournament to the USCF, and we can go to rating report here, USCF, and we'll process the current section. Now in this case, we only had one open section, and it is dual rated, because game 30 is a dual rated tournament, and it's a Swiss system tournament, and the rest is filled in by default according to what you have put in as your settings previously. Now, in this case, I only had that one open section. If I were running a larger tournament with an open section, a middle, um, an open section, an under 1600 section, and an under 1200 section, I would need to do this for all of the sections, and then I would merge them in the tournament report for, before submitting them. Since I've only got the one section, I can go straight to tournament report here, add that section from the directory that I was using for the tournament, I'll look for USCF section text right here, find that file. And again, if I wanted, if I had more sections, I could add all of them before doing the report. In this case, I have the one section, I'm good to go. So let's click do USCF report. Enter our event ID, which is year year. Whoop. MM for date, and the day is the same. My event name is Game 30 Action. One section. I'll leave the dates, they're correct. Automatically filled in. Uh, 
my affiliate ID, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna use a dummy affiliate ID for the moment. Tournament city, state, zip code. I don't need the cross table and it is a scholastic event we'll say. And I'm done. I click done and now let's open up a file explorer. If I go to my Vega directory, I will find the three files, the TD export, TH export, and the TH export.dbf files that I need to submit to the U.S. Federation. So I simply from here will go through the process of submitting to the U.S. Federation by logging in as a tournament director, uploading these files, and completing the rest of the process. But at this point, we're no longer using Vega. We've successfully run the tournament, um, loading players, um, generating pairings, entering buys, um, putting in scholastic teams, generating reports, and submitting it to the USCF. So I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial. I hope that you're interested in using Vega for your future tournaments. I think that as you'll use it, you find that the workflow in Vega is particularly excellent. I find that I can uh, generate and run tournaments in Vega much more quickly and intuitively than I can in other softwares and for uh, a club director out there who wants to use this for a school or for a small casual club I think this is really the tournament software for you and I'd encourage you to check it out, download it for free, try it out and if you like it enough I would encourage you to uh, give a donation to the, um, the people who are working on Vega um, via their website. You can donate via PayPal and that would be money well spent. Thank you.